In this first section of building our scalper algo, we will create our entry order logic. In doing so, we will learn about the different areas of the ADL interface, we will add blocks and set their properties, and we will connect our block ports using edges. Before we can begin, our company administrator needs to have given us access to ADL in the simulation environment, and in order to test our algo, we also need a test account in the simulation environment with the appropriate permissions. We also need to have accepted the relevant market data agreements. We start by navigating to adl.trade.tt and logging in. We are presented with a blank ADL workspace that is connected to a simulation environment. In the center of our workspace is the canvas to which we can add, arrange, and connect the blocks that will define the logic of our algo. In the title bar above, we can give our algo a name by clicking Untitled Algo and entering our name, Scalper. We will leave Autocompile checked to have ADL automatically test the logic of our algo anytime we add new blocks, edges, or otherwise change our algo. On the left, we see our Blocks panel where we can view our list of available blocks. Let's add an order block by dragging and dropping one from the block panel onto our canvas. The order block, as the name suggests, is used to submit an order into the market. Our order block is currently highlighted yellow to indicate that it is selected. To the right, we see the Block Properties panel, which is where we can define the parameters and properties of a selected block. We will give our block a name of Entry Order, which we will see display under the block in our canvas. Giving blocks unique names is essential as algos in ADL can use multiple instances of the same block type. We will leave the order type as Limit, our side as Buy, and our time in force as Day. On our order block, we see that we have input ports on the left which will define the instrument for which the order is placed, the price level, and the order quantity. We also have an on-off port which will let us activate the block and submit the order into the market, or deactivate the block and cancel the order. We also see the output ports on the right which will output the working quantity of a submitted order, as well as a fill port to output information on any fills executed with our order block. The ports themselves indicate what kind of input or output data a port uses, with blue indicating instrument data, red indicating numeric data, green indicating Boolean data, and large black ports indicating discrete messages. With our block added, we also see that we have messages in our information panel at the bottom. On our Problems tab, we can see that we are missing some required inputs, namely the instrument, quantity, and price. Our on-off port is not listed as it has a default value of true. To define the instrument for our order, we will add an instrument block from our Blocks panel onto our canvas. In addition to dragging and dropping, we can double-click to add a block on our canvas. Note that the output port on our instrument block is dark blue, which indicates that this block outputs instrument data. We also see that the order block's instrument input port is also blue to indicate that this port takes instrument data input. We will connect these two ports with an edge by clicking and dragging. Note that ADL prevents us from providing invalid values for inputs and will not let us connect ports of different types. Once connected, we can see that our problem message regarding the instrument port of the order block has disappeared. With the instrument block selected, we'll name this block Instrument and set the type to User Defined to allow the trader who uses this algo the ability to select the instrument. We can use the instrument field to select a default instrument, which will set to the front month E-mini S&P contract. Lastly, we need to select the account we want to use to test our algo. We can see that our instrument block now displays the name of the default contract, as well as a note that the instrument is set to user defined. We want to submit our buy order at the best bid, so we need to extract the current bid price from the instrument data. We could drag and drop a field block from the block panel onto our canvas, and, using the Block Properties panel, use the field name dropdown to select Bid Price, but instead, let's delete this block using the right-click menu and use Block Search to pre-populate our field block. We type the field we are looking to use, Bid Price, and can see that the Block panel provides us with a number of options. We can select the field block labeled Bid Price and add it to our canvas. Now, all we need to do is give it the name of Best Bid. We see a new problem message appeared in the information panel letting us know that the best bid field block requires an instrument input. Clicking on each of these messages will highlight the relevant block. The field block has a blue instrument input port as well as a red numeric output port. Let's connect them to their corresponding blocks by pressing Shift to use ADL's edge finder. One option is to left click on an individual edge suggestion to add that connection. or Let's right-click and delete that edge. We can also hold down Shift and right-click, which will add edges at all of the dotted lines. Once connected, we see the corresponding problem messages disappear. We also see that the field block begins displaying the best bid price of the ES contract next to its red numeric output port. Lastly, we'll define the order quantity by adding a number block to our canvas. 
Let's again use the block search to not only find a number block, but populate the block with a value of 5. We type 5 in the block search and can drag and drop our number block seeded with a value of 5. In the block properties panel, we'll give it a name of entry order quantity. We have 5 set to be the default value, but we'll also set the variable type to user defined to allow the trader using the algo to set the order quantity. We'll then press shift and click the dotted line for the suggested connection to connect the red numeric output of our number block to the red numeric input of the order block's quantity port. Since we are not creating logic to activate or deactivate the order, we don't need to supply an input for the on-off port as it has a default value of true. The last of our problem messages in the information panel has disappeared, and we have completed our entry order logic. In this section, we covered the different areas of our interface. We worked with the canvas where we arranged and connected our blocks. We added blocks using the block panel. We entered properties for our blocks in the block properties panel and we monitored issues in our algo using the information panel. We added blocks by clicking and dragging, by double clicking, and by using block search to find blocks and pre-populate block parameters. We connected blocks with edges by finding matching port types, clicking and dragging between ports, and pressing shift to use edge finder. In the next section, we will test our algo logic so far.